this section, we're going to talk about more applications of the derivative. Particularly, we're going to be talking about increasing and decreasing. So before we jump into the calculus part of it, I wanted to first review all this from pre-calculus so you get the basic idea of what increasing and decreasing involves. So the basic idea is as x increases, y increases. That's for increasing. What you can think of when, when we have this kind of definition as if x increases, that means you're moving to, uh, from left to right. So you're moving to the right. So as you move to the right, it says y increases. We can think of that as an uphill portion. So as we're moving this direction, we're looking for a part of the graph that's going uphill as you move from left to right. For decreasing, you're still going from left to right because we have x is increasing, but y decreases means that you're looking for the part of the graph that's going downhill as you move from left to right. Now if you have constant, as x increases, the y does not change. That means you have a part of the graph that's horizontal. That means that you have a horizontal line. It's not increasing and it's not decreasing. It's staying the same. That's what we mean by uh, constant. So now that we've gone through this idea, we're going to apply that to this example down here. Now all these here, we're going to read this from the graph itself and this is what you would have done in, in a pre-calculus class. The examples that are going to follow this one we're going to do all this information, but we're going to do that without a graph. We're going to do it all algebraically, and that's where the calculus comes into play. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, let's just use the graph. So the graph is provided. We want to find the interval or intervals of increasing. So it means we don't want to put greater than or less than symbols here. You want to use interval notation. And increasing is talking about as you move from left to right, you're looking for any part of the graph that's going uphill as you go from left to right. Here's one section, it's this section here, and here's another section on the end. So the first section in between here, we have a section between negative 1 and 0. Now I'm choosing to use parentheses here because if we take a look at this point down below and that point there, at that point you have a, a horizontal tangent, which means that those, those places it's technically not increasing or decreasing. So I'm not including the, the endpoints here, I'm putting parentheses there because technically at that point nothing's happening so that's why it's, it's best to use parentheses when you're giving your answers for these intervals. We have a union because there's another section that's going uphill as you move from left to right. That's between 1 and 2. Uh, actually uh, 1 and infinity I should say because there's an arrow on the end here. If there was a closed circle there I would, I would end this at 2 but because there's an arrowhead on, on the end, it keeps on going forever. So technically this is going to be going to infinity. 1 to infinity would be your uh, interval of increasing. Let's do the decreasing. Decreasing, looking for part of the graph that's going downhill as you move from left to right. As you go from left to right, here's one section. It's going downhill and we have another section in here. Again, because you have an arrowhead on the end, that means we're going to be using infinity. Particularly in this case, we're going to use negative infinity negative infinity down to negative one. Negative one is where it stops decreasing. Notice that my answers here are all going to be in terms of x. So we're not using any y values, we're only using x values when you indicate these intervals. So between the x values of negative infinity and negative one, we have part of the graph that's going downhill. But we also have this section in here, that's between zero and 1 is another section where it's decreasing. Next, let's do the intervals of constant. Okay, well we're looking for the part of the graph that's uh, an interval, part of the graph that's uh, staying flat, horizontal portion. There's actually no portions here so we're going to say none. There's no intervals of constant because we don't have any horizontal uh, pieces there in this case. Technically you could put these points in there but, it, but the kind of questions that you'll get uh, for homework aren't going to ask you to put in individual points for your answer. You're just going to indicate there's no intervals of, of constants. In this case we'll put none. Now these are uh, things that we talked about in a previous session, relative max and relative min. You're looking for a place where the, you have a, a hill where you go up and you go down. That's a place where you're going to have a relative max. If you have a valley goes down and then goes up again, that's where you're going to have a relative min. We're going to read these directly off of the graph and we're going to indicate these 
as coordinates. So maximum, it's going to occur this place right here at 0, 0. It increases and it decreases again, so we're going to say that 0, 0 is a relative max. Then we're going to look at the relative min, and actually for this particular graph, the relative mins would also be the absolute minimums because they're the absolute lowest ones in the graph, but relative min and absolute would be the same in this case. Let's indicate those coordinates, negative 1 and negative 1, and then also it's going to be 1, negative 1. You don't need to put the union symbol because remember these are intervals, these are not coordinates. So be careful you don't get that confused. In this case, you, you can just separate them by a comma. And these are the two points that are on here. Negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Those are the two points. Those are the relative minimums and also the absolute mins.